Good morning. Can everybody hear me? Good? Excellent. Welcome to uh, DevNet uh, 1218, the uh, workshop with the longest title, I guess. Um, actually, I, I'd like to say that uh, we're going to bring a little, little more joy to your Cisco Live experience. So um, hopefully you'll enjoy this session. We're going to talk about uh, encrypted traffic and some of the problems around encrypted traffic and how we can get some uh, interesting bits of information out of the pieces that are not encrypted when you're looking at encrypted flows. Uh, what joy is and how we use joy and what it means. Um, some of the machine learning aspects that we have in joy as well as some of the, the latest additions that we've made to the uh, Joy software package so that uh, you can get more uh, information and knowledge out of your encrypted flows that are on your network. My name is Bill Hudson. I'm a technical leader at, in our security and trust organization. And uh, I am actively working on this project. And uh, hopefully, uh, you'll get uh, some good bit of knowledge out of this. And, um, you know, be able to, to see a little bit more about what's going on in your network, even with the encrypted flows. So what's the problem with encrypted traffic? The problem with encrypted traffic is it's encrypted. We can't see what's in the payloads, and that's by design. And so uh, a lot of the, the utilities that we use today are uh, string matching. Uh, you know, they're trying to look at different patterns and strings, and when you encrypt everything, that becomes very difficult. It kind of defeats those tools. Uh, TLS usage is increasing everywhere, including malware, not just in your normal everyday traffic, but malware is now using TLS streams, encrypted traffic, to do what they want to do as well. So that's a big problem. You can't see what's going on. Uh, one, of the, one of the ways that you potentially could do that would be to insert yourself as a man in the middle. But there's problems with that. Uh, you're going to violate data privacy laws if you start decrypting and then re-encrypting users' traffic before it reaches the de destination. That's not going to be a good thing. Uh, it's going to be very expensive to insert yourself in the man as a man in the middle e in order to even do that. So that's not something we really want to do. So we want to take a, a different approach and look at some things that we can look at without inserting ourselves into the encrypted stream and without you know, expending a, a tremendous amounts of money to put ourselves into that position. So what data is available? Well, well with encrypted traffic, before the, the data goes encrypted, the stream becomes uh, you know, unreadable by the human eye. Uh, there's a lot of things that happen that are readable by the human eye that we can get information about. Uh, if you think about NetFlow or Interflow data, um, there, you, know, you know what source and destination addresses are. You know the number of bytes in a packet. You know, those types of things are very easily seen, even though we're about to go into an encrypted flow. Uh, TLS, the, the metadata for TLS, the client server hello exchange, the key exchanges, all of those are very easily seen in packet flows and can give you very good information about what's going to happen in this encrypted stream before the payload actually starts going encrypted. And so those are the types of things we're going to focus on. Specifically with Joy, we're going to look at these particular data items here. Um, that's what's currently in the Joy package. And you'll see how you know, being able to look at the sequence of packet lengths, the byte distribution, uh, the cipher suites that are being offered in, in, in a TLS exchange, how that data will help you understand what's actually going on in an encrypted flow before that flow becomes encrypted. There's actually a paper uh, written uh, by a couple colleagues of mine uh, deciphering malware's use of TLS without decryption. It's a PDF. It's available on the internet, free. Um, I can get you the actual hyperlink if you'd like. See me afterwards. Uh, but if you Google uh, that, that um, title, you'll find that paper no problem. It's a very good read. So <clears throat> in order to do this, we need enhanced telemetry. We need to have the additional data items available to us and so what do we mean by enhanced telemetry? <clears throat> so the sequence of packet lengths and times, the byte distribution, the TLS metadata. For DNS, we can look at length flows. And HTTP, the, the headers in HTTP packets have extraordinarily uh, useful amounts of information in them. So these are the enhanced data types that we're speaking about. Um, what we want to do is try to incorporate those into existing known um, tools that we have today. So add some additional data fields to NetFlow v9 
for instance. Um, add some additional data fields to IP fix packet collection, those types of things. Um, if you're fortunate enough, you can uh, span a switch port and actually get the raw packets themselves, then you get a lot more information. But what we want to do is we've defined some uh, enhanced telemetry types that are useful for this particular analysis, and we're adding those into the, the NetFlow structures and the um, IP fix structures and things like that, so we're able to get that data through normal mechanisms. So if you set up NetFlow collectors, um, we'll, you can add these data types to them, and then they, they come to your NetFlow destination ready for you to analyze that additional data. So what's interesting about the sequence packet lengths and times? The interesting part of this is it will show you an actual client-server exchange with the number of bytes being presented and the time it's taking them to process and respond. So that can be very interesting in that um, you can see a, a short message, which is most likely a client request asking for something, and then some amount of time will go by and the server will respond with probably much larger, mar larger amount of data, which is the response to what they're looking for. And so over time, you can see particular exchanges and how, how they would look based on the number of bytes sent, the number of bytes received, how long it's taken the process. So you can start to characterize a client when it gets this number of bytes, it takes you know, this amount of time to process it. And if that was to change over time, that, that would be an interesting bit of data to say, well, it used to take you know, two milliseconds to process 1,500 bytes. Now it's taken 22. What changed? What happened? And so it, it may give you some interesting ideas into what your client's actually doing now as opposed to what it was doing before. On the right-hand side, you can see uh, which looks like JSON output here. This is actual output from the Joy utility. Joy puts everything out in JSON uh, format so that you can consume it in uh, various different tools that you have today. Uh, what we're seeing here is the byte count, the inner packet time, and then the direction, you know, which way the, the particular byte, that packet went. So th this is just specific to um, the sequence. And as you can see, it's, it's classified under packets, and then each packet and the direction it was going in. Byte distribution and entropy. So byte distribution is the number of times we see a particular byte in, in the payload. And so if you think about uh, the, the, the top left over here is a standard uh, unencrypted text message. And so what's one of the most popular characters you're going to see in just the standard type message plain text? The space character, which is exactly what we're seeing right here, right? Byte 32. It's going to be seen the most. You're going to you know, have the space character throughout your, your text message. If we take that same message and encrypt it, now your byte distribution becomes much more uniform across the entire spectrum. So it's much harder to tell what's going on because everything is now encrypted. And that, that's one of the problems with TLS. Everything's encrypted. So over here, I could figure everything's going to be in the ASCII range, the alphanumeric range, and the space character in return. That's what I'm going to see a lot of. Same message, I see a lot of everything. So I can't really gain any information about that. Um, these two bottom graphs are the exact same messages encrypted, just with different base values, base 16 and base 32. So you would expect to see the same distribution. It's uniform because it's encrypted, just on a different base. Again, the, the JSON output from Joy on the side gives you uh, the entropy and the byte distribution. So each one of these is the 0 to 255 array of the, the ASCII values and the count the number of times that we've seen it. It, and the entropy is the number of bits that we need in order to figure out what that byte is. So you can see when it's encrypted, you almost need the full eight bits to figure out what the byte is. So I talked a little bit about TLS and the information exchange. This is a, a typical client server, hello, we're gonna set up an encrypted tunnel. And the interesting pieces of data that we can get out of each of those messages. So the TLS version, the cipher suites I'm going to offer, and the extensions I'm going to offer to use for this encrypted tunnel. As we'll see later on, those things become very um, specific and are, are an extremely valuable character of particular uh, SSL implementations. 
and you're able to determine things about it just by seeing what, what these are. Again, on, on, the, on the response, we can see which one the server selected. We can find out what, what extensions they are, and we also get the server certificate. So now we know what we're talking to. We can get some information out of there. Another key piece of data is we get the key length that they're going to use for the encryption. And this, this is very important because um, I'll show you some later, but it allows you to do a passive audit on your network. So you have, you have a client that says it uses the latest OpenSSL library, and we're using you know, RSA 4096 keys, right? That's what they're telling you. But then you look at the traffic, and you see, well, you're always negotiating RSA 1024 key. You're telling me you're using a, 20, a 4096. What's the deal here? You're not actually using what you say you're using. So you'll see how we're able to, to detect that just by looking at the, the TLS metadata in an exchange. OK, so I've given you kind of a lot of information here. And uh, you know, OK, what are we going to do with this, Bill? How does this make sense? And uh, what is Joy anyway? And so Joy is a software package that we've developed. We've actually made it open source. You can go download it and start playing with it today. Um, it's a collection of components, uh, software components, Python scripts. Um, there's a uh, UI in there that's uh, it's bottle Python UI server it's for visualization, and we'll see that a little later. But it allows you to uh, take a PCAP that you already have, run it through Joy, and get the resulting JSON. Or you can actually uh, start Joy up on, on a live interface. If you were to start it up on your laptop, you could monitor your Ethernet interface and the packets that are going in and out of your laptop as you surf the web or whatever and have Joy classify that data and look at it. Again, everything's output in JSON. And then there's some tools that we can use to query that. Uh, you can look for different things. Uh, we can enrich it. And then the Salt UI, I said, is, is a, um, a, a small little uh, web server that will allow you to visualize some of that data. And I'll show you examples of all this as we go forward. So your big question is, OK, it's open source. Bill, where do I get this? <clears throat> so you can download Joy at the GitHub under Cisco, package type Joy. It's a um, standard Linux type uh, install. You do a config. You make it. You can install it if you want, or you can just run it. Um, there are plenty of options on that, and I'll go through some of those in, in a minute. And um, it runs on, we know it runs on um, your more popular Linux installs, uh, Red Hat, Ubuntu. Uh, it runs on Mac OS. You can actually run it on Raspberry Pi if you like. So we're trying to support you know, the major OSs. And uh, it's, it's not very big. It's not very large. So it won't take you know, hours to download. It'll just take you a few minutes. And uh, I encourage you to go play with it and uh, see what you can do. Some of the interesting files that are in that package, uh, Joy is actually the binary that you would run. That's the program that does the uh, processing of the PCAPs or the pulling in the, the, the packets from the, from the interface. Uh, query, uh, the Python script that allow you to search different things in, in the JSON output. Um, enrich uh, allows you to add some um, you know, enrichment to the data to, to help your visualization, to help you understand what's going on. The salt UI, so the readme is a good, good place to start inside that. That's the uh, bottle Python server that will allow you to visualize the, the data in, in um, a more consumable format instead of looking at JSON. If you like to look at JSON, you, you're certainly uh, welcome to just look at the JSON. One of my colleagues, uh, he just stays in the JSON. He likes looking at the JSON. But he, he's kind of a, a data scientist anyway, so you know that, that's his thing. Uh, we have a man page, so if you install it and you do man joy, you'll get the nice man page and everything. And uh, obviously the README. Um, I'll take a look at that and see what's going on. So this looks like a mess, right? <laughs> too many options. Um, and I kind of agree, there are too many options. But we've tried to make the joy package so that you can customize it to what you want to look for in your particular analysis or, or the run you're going to do. Um, so, you know, if you're looking at something on your network, you may be totally interested in TLS, for instance, whereas somebody else in the room may um, 
I, I really don't care about the TLS going on. I've been having issues with DNS, so I want, I want to make sure that you know, I've got the DNS going on. So we allow you to have various different options to classify the run how, however you need to, to understand what's going on in your network. There are lots of different things. Some of the interesting ones here, though, um, the model, that allows you to update the machine learning classifier inside the JOY program so that when it's processing the traffic going through the JOY program, it understands when you want to classify malware versus not malware, your machine learning uh, weights, you can update them as you retrain and retrain because the, the network traffic that you have today is going to look a little bit different than the network traffic you have in six months. And so the important thing about machine learning is you, you need to constantly retrain so that you get accurate results and less false positives. Um, there's another page of options. Like I said, there's too many options here. Um, but you can specify NetFlow ports, so we can pull in the NetFlow, uh, those types of things. Again, uh, all of this is in the help and in the readme. Uh, you can see what they are. And we have a sample config file that offers some popular defaults if you just want to get started. And uh, so, you know, look at the different options, see what looks good to you. And, uh, you know, like I said, play with it and, 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 you know, really see what you can do. So what does it look like if we're going to do uh, a PCAP file and run it through Joy? So you would do a command similar to this. Um, we have our test PCAP. And uh, we, we were interested in, the, you know, bidirectional flows. So <clears throat> the bidirectional flow, what that does is it takes all the packets and associates them together in a flow. So you have client asking for stuff, reserve responding, and it's all intermixed with all different clients and servers. What Joy will do is it'll stitch together the flow and create, you know, source address, destination address. These were all the packets and the interesting thing that happened. So it kind of does that combination for you. So you don't have to associate, if you look at a Wireshark, you've got, you know, all these intermixed packets and you've got to associate this one with this one, or you put in some nice display filters so you're only looking at the ones you want. Joy handles all that for you. And so some of the interesting uh, output here, and so we ran it through the query, and uh, we didn't ask it for anything. We just said, show us everything. But, um, and then I, we annotated this. You won't get the comments here, but you will get this data. And so you can see um, you know, some of the, the JSON is abbreviated, SA for source address, DA, destination address. Uh, we kind of you know, trying to make those make sense. Um, if something doesn't make sense or you have a suggestion, let us know, obviously. Um, but that, that's kind of what you will see when, when you run uh, data through Joy and get the resulting output. <clears throat> so talked a little bit about TLS, talked a little bit about Joy, and, and said, you know, hey, we can do this passive crypto audit. Your, your library is not doing what it, what it says it's doing or what you told me it was going to do. What does that really mean? So we took some malware data, known malware, and ran it through Joy. And we took some known good data, benign software, and ran it through Joy. And we came up with some interesting observations. Um, First off, we're able to see the, the cipher suites that people are selecting. And as you can see here, um, there was a few clients that are still operating encrypted tunnels with RC4. Anybody see a problem with that? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So this would be a not good thing. Th 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 these clients right here, I would want to go track down immediately and say, what are you doing? What are you using? And we need to upgrade that uh, crypto library today, right? So. Encrypted traffic, we had no idea what was going on, what they were doing, but we're able to see they're not using strong ciphers. Uh, hopefully that wasn't somebody's banking information, right? Um, again, over here, uh, just looking at the key links that were selected to do the encryption, um, we see a lot of uh, RSA 1024. It's not considered strong anymore. Um, so a uh, good thing is a lot of them were doing elliptical curve, 520-bit uh, keys, really, really good there. But you, you can see the power of just looking at what's being offered and what's being selected in the exchange that is not encrypted before the payload goes into that encrypted tunnel. So I mentioned earlier we can figure out what SSL library you're using, right? So we've run a bunch of data captures on all the different versions of OpenSSL. And what we found out is that, not surprisingly, OpenSSL 098 looks like OpenSSL 098. 
And OpenSSL 100 looks like OpenSSL 100, which is the, the, the middle graph all the way through. So each version is going to look like itself. But what we did find out that was, that was uh, useful to us is that 9.8 does not look like 1.0. And 1.0 does not look like 1.01, and, and so on and so on. So just looking at the Cypher suites and the TLS extensions that are being offered up, we're able to pretty reliably tell which version of OpenSSL you're using without ever going to the client, without ever inspecting the software, without going to your machine and typing OpenSSL version. We can pretty much figure out, just looking at the exchange, which version you're using. Like, Bill, OK, great. What's that going to do for me? Everybody remember Heartbleed? OK, I tell you uh, Heartbleed came out. Go fix your application. Don't worry, Bill, I fixed it. It's all good, OK? I run the traffic. Why are you still showing up here? I know Heartbleed was fixed up here. Your traffic is, is looking a lot like this library. You said you fixed it. So you're able to actually do a audit on the client without looking at the client, only looking at the exchange. And you can pretty reliably tell where they are in the picture and whether or not that client is still susceptible to Heartbleed. Now, it may not actually have Heartbleed happening, but that particular client is still vulnerable to it. Now, of course, if the library popped up up here, we'd say, OK, you're good. You don't have that particular vulnerability exposure, but there could be something else. The point is, just looking at the Cypher suites and the extensions that are being offered, we're able to figure out where you are on the spectrum and then also potential vulnerabilities that can be very impacting to your business because you're using a client that hasn't been updated or hasn't been patched. So very powerful. So I talked a lot about extensions and software and detecting clients and things like that. So what's the purpose of all this? The purpose is to improve our threat detection. We want to be able to figure out what's on our network and be able to find it faster than we have in the past. We want to be able to stop it as soon as we can. And so when we you know, it, it ran all the known malware through Joy and then all the, the non-malware through Joy to, to kind of train up our machine learning classifier, um, we found some interesting things out. So the, the offered Cypher suites, uh, the blue bars represent the, the normal software, innocent software, benign software, and, and the red is the malware. But in the offered Cypher Suite, so just by offering Cypher Suite 0064, and I don't know exactly which one that is off the top of my head, but we, we didn't see that in any of the benign software, but it was in the malware. So having that Cypher Suite in your, in your offer, we would put a very strong weight that that is probably going to look like a malware flow. But that's just one category. We can add in other categories. Which Cypher seats were selected? So not just offered, but was selected. So we would want to weight those as well. And you can see the benign software, it, it gets selected, you know, this one a lot, whereas the malware very rarely selected it. Over here, the benign software never selected this particular Cypher. Malware selects it a lot. So this would be a very strong weight. So if we were to see this offered and this one selected, you probably got a malware flow about to happen that's going to be encrypted. And so that's where, that's where the machine learning and the training of the machine learning comes in. Looking at the offered Cypher suites, the selected ones, the TLS extensions, the, the public key length, we're able to, based on known malware in the past, based on known non-malware, we're able to figure out, put some weighting on the different options that we see. And looking at the traffic going through your system, we can say with fairly high accuracy, that looks like it's a good flow. That looks like it's a malware flow. So we didn't, we didn't decrypt anything. We didn't violate any privacy. But we're, we're able to see what's going on and give a good idea that, hey, you may want to start looking at this client or this particular source because it looks like it may have some malware in it. So you've heard me mention machine learning, the hottest new buzzword, machine learning, right? Everybody's on machine learning. What is it? What does it really mean? So how it works in Joy is um, we'll get flow records, NetFlow, PCAPs, actual packets, those types of things, run them into Joy. And Joy will parse them out, figure out if it's TLS, if it's DNS, whatever it may be. And then um, if you have the classify option specified, 
it'll run it through the classifier. And basically, everything we've parsed out of the flows and the packets, we've run through the classifier, which is that machine weighting on different values. If it sees this one, it's this weight. If it sees this one, it's another weight. And it'll come up with a probability that it's malware or it's not malware. And so you'll see the flows coming in, and then out, the output is the JSON, where, OK, that one looks good. That one looks good. Oh, this one looks like it might be malware. That one looks good, and so on. And so that's how it works. The training of the machine learning data into a classifier is the important part. You have to have a trained up weighting system for your network. Um, there is default classifier in the Joy package. Um, it's one we input based on exploding known malware and some benign traffic. That may or may not produce accurate results for your network. Everybody's traffic in their network is going to be a little bit different. And so you will want to train the classifier for your network. Um, so you'll, you, what we did is we you know, exploded, ran some known malware through, and then known good software through, went into the training procedure, and then we have a, a model Python script, which will help create your, your classifier that you can then, on that command line option or through an updater, you can use that for your joy run instead of the one that's default in the program. So <clears throat> you can get a good trained classifier for your network, use those parameters, and then start running your, your network flows through Joy and get some accurate information about what's going on in your network. And you can just use the defaults with the, with the sample PCAPs we have just to see and play with it and see how everything goes. So the results, um, the classifier that we have in, in the Joy package. So we use an L1 logistic, logistic regression. Um, on the left-hand side, you see we use the um, sequence of packet length and times plus your normal 7-tuple from NetFlow and byte distribution. And what it gives us is with uh, 100, uh, roughly 172 non-zero parameters, we're able to um, figure out some stuff. Our false discovery rate, so the 0 0.01 is one false discovery per 10,000 flows. That's what our goal is. And you can see on, on the left, it's not very good. Um, but our accuracy rate for determining uh, malware was 96%. So that was very good. Just by adding in the TLS information, our false the number of parameters we need drops by almost 40. And our false discovery rate, we, we become very, very good at it, right? 90.4% of the time, when we hit it, it's, it's, it's malware. It's not, it's not a false positive. And our accuracy even bumped up a few more points, almost 100%. Now that's pretty impressive, 99.6%. And that's just adding in that TLS information that's available to you in the clear without decrypting anybody's traffic, without violating any privacy concerns or regulations. So very good stuff. OK, Bill, what have you added to Joy lately? What's going on? So as of the show today, the latest additions, we've added in an IP fix collector and exporter. So what that means is if you don't have the processing power or the storage power on the particular thing you're analyzing, you can set up a Joy instance, which will be very minimal, to have it export the data off to another box where you have a lot of storage and a lot of processing power. And you can start a Joy instance on that box to collect that data that the other one's sending. And then you can do your analysis there. So it allows you to run Joy and do your network analysis on uh, particular machines that may not be up to snuff horsepower wise or may be very small and do a specific function. We're in the process of adding in TLS fingerprinting. Uh, the framework for it is in there. If you download the code, you will see uh, some of the framework, but it is not yet complete. We hope to have that complete in the next couple months. Uh, you can dynamically update the blacklists, the classifiers, and, and the fingerprinting once it's complete. <clears throat> so the blacklist, that's a uh, list of websites that are known to be associated with malware. There are plenty of resources out in the world that, that will do this. They'll, they'll give you that list. Uh, the one we like to use, of course, is Talos, you know, Cisco. Um, and it's a very, very long list of IP addresses that are known to associate with malware. Uh, but you can update that. So if you, if you were to start Joy 
on, say, a switch port, and you just want to have it constantly monitor the traffic going through there, um, if that's been up for two weeks, a month, three months, the, the blacklist is going to be outdated. So you'll want that to be able to be updated without having to stop it and restart it. And so we added an updater thread that will go out and pull in the new file and automatically update the blacklist inside the running software for you so that when Talus adds new, new uh, IP addresses to the feed, you can get that new file, put it in there, and now you, you're going you're to find those as well. Um, the updater thread is a separate thread. Uh, doing the updates will not block the parsing and classification that you're, that you're really interested in. And the parsing and classification will not stop your updates from happening. So very good thing there. And again, the, the latest code is in, in the Joy uh, repository on GitHub. OK, Bill, we don't want to look at JSON, right? Nobody wants to look at JSON. We want to look at something nice and pretty. I wouldn't exactly call this nice and pretty. Again, it's just a sample bottle Python server. But um, the, the resulting output that comes out of Joy, uh, the one that's in the jo uh, Joy package, the software package, in the salt UI directory, you can actually up upload that file to the little server that is in there. And it will display the results for you in a format like this. Um, with this one here showing, and it's sorted from is malware to not malware, because you don't care if it's not malware. You care if it's malware, right? Uh, so the, the classification, the probability was malware. So these particular flows here, they were, you know, it's, it's high. And then also, because we were looking at TLS, the probability that it was TLS is at 0.99. Now, most of us just looking at the destination port 443 would say, oh, that's going to be TLS. We know that, right? It's, it's not a problem. Well. Some applications will run TLS on non-standard ports. And so you, you may find some non-standard ports in here that actually TLS exchanges go on. So the interesting thing is you get the output from Joy, upload it into this server, and then you can get a visual representation on it. And you don't have to you know, hurt your eyes with the JSON. So um, kind of wrapping up here, um, machine learning. We want to passively look at what's going on in your network. We don't want to decrypt any encrypted traffic. We don't want to violate any privacy rights. Um, we're able to uh, accurately detect malware communication just by looking at what's available to us in the clear. Um, we can detect the misused cryptography. You know, the, the case of the client still using RC4, not a good thing. The, uh, SPLT, the byte distribution, the TLS headers, those are all valuable data. Hopefully, you've seen that in the presentation, that having that information can aid you in seeing what's going on in your traffic. And as, as far as man in the middle goes, um, we feel this is a better approach. It doesn't cost you anything. You're not violating privacy. You don't need expensive hardware to insert yourself in the middle or anything like that. And again, it's an open source package. Uh, why did we make it open source? Uh, number one, we want people to get it and play with it. We want you to see it. We want you to use it. We want you to, to understand what's going on in your network. Second thing is, hopefully some of you out there will start uh, contributing to the package, um, adding in new protocols. Say there's uh, something interesting you learned when you looked at uh, uh, network time protocol, NTP. Maybe you learned something interesting. Oh, this would be great if Joy could do this for me. And you, you know, put that feature into the Joy package for everybody to use. So we want the open source community to, to kind of contribute and help build this tool. Um, we do have a support alias. Uh, I'm on that alias, uh, as well as a few other people that are uh, working on the project. So if you have problems or send questions to that, myself or someone on my team will probably be the ones that respond. And um, if you need help or would like to figure out how to do well-trained classification, for your network. Um, again, you can contact us on that alias. And you know, we'll, we'll be more than happy to kind of help you walk through what, what you need to do and what you should be doing in order to get a good classifier for your network. Um, as far as the open source, it's like, why would Cisco give this away? It, it seems like a pretty valuable tool. I, I hope you all agree that it's, you know, we got some good information here. Um, our switching and routing platforms are implementing the extensions that Joy needs in order to see this stuff. So Cisco Gear is going to be able to export that data for you natively just by configuration so that you'll be able to see these things. 
Um, you, you won't have to do any hacks or you know, extra things to get the data out of the, the network traffic that you're looking for. Our gear is going to do it for you. And so that's where Cisco is, is looking. We, we want to be able to present that data. And then we want you guys to be able to use that data and start asking for that data and demanding that data so that you can see what's going on in your network. You can learn more about Joy and encrypted traffic and seeing what's going on in encrypted traffic. Today at 2.30, uh, Blake Anderson's going to be giving a breakout session. He's going to dive more into the, the math and the machine learning around it. And Blake's actually in the back of the room here right now. Um, so he'll be the one that uh, will be giving this presentation. Uh, I'll be there as well um, to, to support him as he did me. And then tomorrow, uh, right over here in classroom two, uh, right out in the open, there's a hands-on workshop. We'll have laptops with joy on it. You can uh, get down, use it, do it. Uh, we will be there. The experts will be there to help you understand what, you, what you're seeing, what you're doing, what's going in, what's going out. So a uh, very good workshop tomorrow. Um, I encourage you to attend it. I think sign-ups may have been full, but you can stand behind somebody and watch what they're doing and see the, you know, the, the interactive on the screen as well. Uh, also, don't forget to complete the online evaluation. Hopefully, you found this session informative. Um, if you complete four of them, uh, you'll get a Cisco Live t-shirt uh, on Thursday. And uh, you can complete the survey. If you have the mobile app, you can complete the survey on the mobile app. Or you can go to any of the stations and uh, complete the survey there. And uh, that's uh, all I had. Um, if you have any questions, it looks like we have probably five to 10 minutes for questions if you, if you want to ask some questions. And I'll also be available right outside the door here if we get pushed out of the room. So many questions? No questions? So this all made sense? Good? All right. Well, thank you guys for attending. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the session. Um, good luck and, and have a, a good conference at the, the rest of the conference. And uh, hopefully we'll see you at the breakout session or in the workshop tomorrow. Thank you.